So let's talk about stocks and cryptocurrencies, all of your investments and the reasons why they go down. But let's focus on the couple of really main ones. And it usually has to do if it's a good investment with those big giant firms, hedge funds, institutions wanting to buy at a lower price. So they will drive that price down so they can pick up shares at a cheaper price. So any news and you can kind of see any news will be bad news. You will have markets where no matter what happens, no matter what the feds, no matter what the economy does, it will be bad news. So good news is bad news. All news is bad news. Then there's the reason where the company or the cryptocurrency, whatever you're investing in, is just a bad investment. And, and over long term, you lose money. So we'll talk about what's happening in the stock market, NVIDIA, cryptocurrencies, and, and just the general plan, what you should be doing over the next couple of months. Again, if you want to get my buy and sell alerts, if you want to join our community and get the portfolio reviews, check out our 10K to 100K portfolio or even the 0 to 10K portfolio for new investors. It's all available via my Patreon. You can join us for absolutely free. The link is down below. Or again, if you want to sign up for any of the tiers, just go to www.patreon forward slash invest with Alan and join us. Amazing community and we travel together and we're trying to start even a crypto exchange Again, as a partnership with everyone. So, strap in. Serious $40,000 Bitcoin price crash warning issued as the Fed suddenly braces for the U.S. dollar crisis. Again, they've been predicting this crisis, essentially total collapse, all of this, you know, my entire life. And again, if you just understand that the entire world relies on the U.S. dollar, you'll understand what a crock of nonsense this is. For this to happen... For you to see a total collapse, the whole world would essentially have to collapse. And I know some countries are switching to bricks and switching out of the U.S. dollar. But for every country that switches out of it, two or three switch to it. So we're net gainers no matter what. And this is why you've seen such a strong dollar. Now, typically, just so you understand how it works with stocks and cryptocurrencies, the weaker the dollar is, the stronger the markets are. It's, it's actually very, very much beneficial to the markets, which is one of those very weird things that this year we had a strong dollar in a rally over the last 12 months. It's typically not what you see. Now, how they make it cheaper is they will use any news. They will use anything they can to drive down the price of, let's say, Bitcoin or Ethereum. That way they can put more money into it at a better price for their clients, for their ETFs. So I want you to understand when you launch an ETF, an exchange traded fund, when you want to buy for your big millionaire, billionaire or trillionaire clients, you want to basically do when that client says, you know what, Bob? I would like to add maybe 5% of Bitcoin or Ethereum to my portfolio. Maybe I'll add some directly. Maybe I'll add some through ETFs, exchange traded funds. ETFs are essentially just like mutual funds, except you can day trade with them. So when you get customers like that, that have a lot of money, they really control a lot of everything, then the narrative is going to change. And how can we drag the price of cryptocurrencies down so we can get the best possible price for our clients. Once we do that and these clients get massive returns, then those people that did that, right, their financial advisors, they get a nice 10 or 20% cut of that. So not only do the clients win, but they also win as well. It's a double win for them. So they won't manipulate that market. So let's talk about NVIDIA. NVIDIA sold off massive crash about 10 to 12% across 24 hours right before that lawsuit, that Department of Justice probe, and all of that was announced by Bloomberg. How magically did every firm, all the multi-billion dollar firms, sell off exactly the exact same time right before those articles came out by Bloomberg? And it's all insider trading. They all have a game plan. Essentially, what you just have to do is what their game plan, that game plan is and follow along with it. So we are looking a little bit of, I'm not even going to call this a, a bounce back. It's kind of shameful to call 1% anything, but we're, you know, maybe hopefully finally hitting that zone of accumulation or we have either bottomed out. I'd like to think that I don't want to see any more downside again at this price right now. Bitcoin is, you know, let's just take a look what it is actually. So we're going to go over here and you can see the Ethereum is probably going to be flat under year year to date. Uh, let's take a look. Ethereum year to date is up 5%, 5.5%. 5 
pretty close to flat on the year. Um, you know, over the last year, it is up 52%, but this entire year, you really didn't make a whole lot of anything at all because you would not have timed these bottoms here at all. So you're probably broken even or you are down. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Very curious about Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is... So Bitcoin is... Uh, this is... I can't even believe this. Is this really right? 40... 32% up on year to date. This doesn't seem right to me, but wow. So, wow. This kind of makes me realize that I probably should just be shifting a lot of my money into Ethereum. I mean, you're talking about a 28% more rally in Bitcoin over Ethereum over the last year to date from January 1st. Considering that Ethereum historically beats out I mean, Ethereum always beats it out. The last, you know, 10 and a half years that Ethereum has existed, it's beaten it out. And the last 14 almost years for Bitcoin. So very, very interesting. Do you think some of you should consider maybe moving some of that Bitcoin money into Ethereum? Remember, the advantages of Bitcoin having its own ETF are now gone. And that flow into Ethereum is going to come. So something to think about. Wow, 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 wow. So one year... 126% upside and one year wow almost triple yeah i think i'm gonna start shifting a little bit of my money into ethereum by selling bitcoin that's that's good to know glad i kind of uh, compared it now bitfinex says sell the news a reaction to rate cuts could push crypto markets down in september well we're already there, and I do believe we're pretty close to the bottom. If we go down another 5% or so, we're already so close to the bottom. You selling now and trying to rebuy back at a lower low is probably going to result in some bad news because then you're going to see like a 20% rally in one day. You're going to be like, man, shouldn't have sold out. So at this point, if you think if you held out from 4200 almost dollars, you know, I think it was 4180 for Ethereum to right now, you probably shouldn't be selling it when it's down more than 50%. Again, total crypto market did sink below $2 trillion after it broke $3 trillion, which is unbelievable. Actually, the crypto market was way above even NVIDIA's entire market cap, and it's now lost about 35% of that. As analysts, I Bitcoin reversing below $54,000. Don't really see it. Again, I, you know, I haven't marked on my thing bouncing off of 56, not 54. But either way, if you're trying to like time it to a thousand or two or three thousand dollars, you know, from the bottom, I, I I think you're gonna you know hurt yourself. You're most likely better off holding on to what you have at this point than maybe just buying a little bit on a weekly basis. So again, Bitcoin rally to resume with rate cuts. Three crypto centric stocks to watch. I think if you're interested in purchasing crypto, you should just buy crypto. But I do agree over here that yes, Nvidia is a good one. Robinhood is another good one. And I don't know anything about um, Interactive Brokers Group. But I would really love to see NVIDIA below 105, preferably in the 92 to $96 range. Again, what I am personally buying is Salesforce. I'm going to continue to purchase Salesforce. I'm going to continue to purchase Ethereum. Now, again, Dollar General, I want to buy like a quarter share of it. You know, maybe $20 of it, which is 0 0.25 shares. Because I do think this is going to be a massive, massive recovery in Dollar General, especially once we have a full-blown recession at some point next year. So maybe you start nibbling now at these lows, and I want you to understand what you're buying. You're buying a company with a pretty fantastic dividend that now is sitting as low as where it was at nine, almost 10 years ago. So we are at 10-year lows for Dollar General the dividend that has not been canceled. And I do think you're pretty much left with nothing but a upside at this point. I don't think we're going to sink a whole lot lower. Like, what are you going to go down to, you know, $60 or something back 20 years ago? I really, really seriously doubt that. I'm starting off with a quarter of a share, 20 bucks. I'm going to slowly work my way up. As it goes up dollar by dollar, I'm going to get more and more bullish, more and more bullish. And at some point when I can see I'm confidently up 5 or 10%, then I'll set a 5% trailing stop loss. That way I know 
No matter what happens, at least I'll break even if this whole thing sells off. And once it gets to 10% upside, I will set another 10% trailing stop loss. That way, I can, as I'm going up and up, I'm continuing to make sure my bottom is set. I can keep all of my gains. And then after 10%, from that bottom, we have now confirmed that zone of accumulation. We have confirmed the reversal, and then I can start going heavier and heavier and heavier. So something to think about there. Again, Dollar General stock crashes. Should investors buy the dip or stay away? Again, Dollar General shares collapsed after the company reduced its full-year sales and earnings outlook. But now we know the sales outlook and the earnings and what they're guessing, right? Their forward guidance from that the, yes, it plunged 30 plus percent, but now if you haven't owned it, now you're getting a 30 percent discount on top of another 20 percent discount across the last year. You're buying the shares essentially probably like 60, 70 percent off. And if we take a look over here, you know, from let's just take a look peaks over here of about just unbelievable 260. So you got 160, 240. You got a 200% upside to get back to the 2022 highs. That's pretty amazing. So I'm going to think about, at the very least, add Dollar General to your watch list. Again, why Walgreens Buddha Lines plunged. I did sell off all of my Walgreens a long, long time ago. And I warned everybody on my Patreon, if you're going to buy something, you really want to switch to CVS. But I'm also very bearish on every single thing pharmaceutical. And there's a couple of reasons. I don't think anybody in the world can stop a couple of companies like Pfizer and Amazon. Amazon getting, is getting into the pharmacy business. Really, I think Walgreens and CVS are eventually going to be destroyed by two big companies, maybe three. And let's talk about those. One of them is going to be just Walmart. Walmart pharmacies generally cheaper, faster, closer, and more convenient for most customers across America. It's a big one. And if I'm buying medications from my mother, father, brother, sister, anybody, and I just kind of price compare between CVS, um, Jewel Osco, Walgreens, Walmart, uh, you know, Amazon, wherever, I'm usually seeing the best deals with Walmart. So that's a big one. That's a huge one that could destroy CVS and Walgreens. The second really big point is that Amazon is just going to get it delivered to your house like in 10 hours and you don't even have to bother. Unless you need that medication that second, you may just really order those edit medications that you continue to renew on a monthly basis from my Amazon itself. So again, major drug makers, Pfizer and Eli Eli made major direct con to consumer announcements. So again, they're following in Amazon's footsteps. Essentially, you have Pfizer, Eli Eli, and you have Amazon all, they're just going to ship it to your house. So that is a massive destruction of CVS, massive destruction of Walgreens. Again, while Walgreens was named a partner of Pfizer's new direct health platform, it stands to potentially lose out on retail drug sales. So even though they're a partner, they're getting a small percentage of that cut, but losing 90% they, they would have originally had. So overall, you're just a massive, massive loser. As drug sales accounted for over half of its revenue, the loss of drug sales... Again, if you're losing the exact same reason, you know, you're losing your main source of business, which accounts for like 95% of all of your business. If that's gone, then what's left? People coming in and buying uh, popcorn or something from your shelves or stale food? That's not going to keep this business alive. Again, um, you know, I, I like to also point out, and, and this is a big one, that those of you that understand, we, we've kind of seen... And if you take a look at, I'm not even going to mention this very specifically, but take a look at what type of CEOs and CFOs most of these big companies have been putting in charge, why they've been doing it, and how it's really harmed these companies. Once you understand that and you see this pattern, you can kind of see that certain CEOs, CFOs that run these businesses really push the companies up and certain ones really kind of destroy them. And, you know, this is happening all over the country for some reason. I don't know what's going on. It's happening with Disney. It's happening with just too many companies. And, again, Walgreens fell for that same trap. They really, instead of focusing on making money, they kind of focused on some kind of agenda. And, really, they've destroyed themselves. And, you know, I can't say that for Intel. They did the exact opposite. They just want to squeeze out as much as possible with zero innovation. That's a different story. But Intel is another interesting stock I will be covering very, very soon. Again, if you take a look at 
Walgreens is just essentially literally going straight to a bankruptcy. It is down 6% over the last five days. It is down 17% over the last one month. It is down 57% in the last six months. It is down 67% in the last literally eight months. And it's, you know, in that 60s range, if you take a look, let's see, you know, if it'll show it to me, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're essentially just being destroyed down from about $62, $63, essentially just now down 86% from November 15, 2019 to September 4th, 2024. This thing is down close to 90%. It's lost everything. And again, hopefully we see this massive shift when it comes to these big businesses, including Google that really should be making double what it's making when they focus on just making money for the investors instead of political agendas. And Walgreens, unfortunately, between the political agendas, selecting the wrong CEO, keeping that CEO way too long in their position. And on top of that, just really not understanding that you need to shift to online sales the world is switching slowly to the internet. You need to switch to direct to consumer. You need to follow whatever Amazon is using to destroy you. Do the same thing. Whatever you know, Pfizer is using to destroy you and beat you and outcompete you. Use that same thing, right? So what you know, their tools, right? That they're using to kind of steal your business. Use those exact same tools, but make them better. So they should have really focused on direct to consumer, but then just said some, you know what, we're gonna even beat you in that price. Because what you really want to do is capture as many as possible consumers to use your platform. And then once they're there, you can maybe kind of try to not increase margins from that point. He didn't do that. And again, Pfizer, you know, is doing pretty okay. The last six months, it's about 10%. And, you know, year to day, it's not, you know, nothing great. It's kind of flat. Uh, over the last year, it's down 20%. But if you take a look, we've also seen these massive ups and downs in Pfizer's. You know, but going back... You know, to the, you know, let's just go back to pretty much where we were in 2019, 2018. We're now up about 3%. So it's really not made anybody money since, you know, 2019. And if you bought maybe earlier, you were made about, which is, let's take a look here. So let's just go, let's just say you bought it somewhere in 2010, you would have made 60%, which again, it's also absolutely nothing. So this is a company that over the last 10, 20 years, has not really made anybody money because, you know, I think, you know, when, when you're putting money in, you're getting a dividend and then you're losing 20%. It's also one that's very, very dangerous to buy. I do think, you know, purchasing it, considering they're making all these deals with Europe and everybody else could be a massive, massive gainer long term. But over the last five plus years, it's not, not a whole lot's happening. So be careful with that one as well. Uh, I do have some Pfizer in my portfolio. I will be selling it out. I will be selling out all of my CVS. And then I might just switch that money to, you know, companies like CRM that I do think will outperform it long term. I might add it to Ethereum and a couple other ones, again, that you will hear about from me in my Patreon. Again, thank you for watching and take care. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button and join me on Patreon. Take care.